All right, this is one of the final times. Hold on a second. How's everybody doing out there today? Hope you're doing well. Just want to say hello from Austin Custom Brass. Good afternoon. Hope you're doing fantastically well today. This is the third time I've tried it. Hopefully the third time's the charm. If you can hear me okay, give me a thumbs up. If you can't hear me, just let me know. Let me know where you're uh, commenting from, what's going on in your neck of the world. And also, just wanted to wish you all, if you haven't heard it a, a billion times already, Happy New Year from ACB. Big announcement tomorrow. If you come to the shop tomorrow, you'll uh, see... Uh, all right, let's do that. That's cool. Hopefully people can see and say hello, no matter where you might be. I'm hoping you are well. Let me shut this. All right, we're back. Hello, how you doing? So, greetings from Arkansas. That's cool. Thanks for tuning in. Happy New Year. Um, I got a cool, cool toy today. I did a video on Instagram. Hopefully you all know my Instagram channel. Lots of cool eye candy and videos there. Uh, <clears throat> of course, our YouTube channel always has videos. We try to post new videos almost every day. So thanks for tuning in everybody. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. And uh, just wanted to show off. This is the, the Shop Gonchorn from Shoggle. Um, and we wanted to have a permanent horn in stock so anybody who comes visit us at ACB can try out this one. This one's a light version. They make a light and a heavy version. I, I love it. There's something nice about the rotary valves and how how they almost articulate for you. So if you're doing like a like Clark, for instance. <clears throat> I mean, you have to get used to it. So, best day for shop visits. Um, we are open for appointments uh, Tuesday through Saturday. So, any really one of those days are are fine. Uh, today is more of a video and inventory day for the shop, so it's actually not open. Even though I'm almost here, I'm here almost every Monday. Um, <clears throat> If uh, you want me to be here, make sure it correlates with a time that I'm not at a trade show, because, uh, for instance, the shows that are coming up soon, NAM show out in Anaheim in a few weeks. Uh, we've got TMEA in San Antonio, National Trumpet Competition in, I think it's in Lexington this year. Um, there's a lot of shows that I'll be there rep either representing my shop or um, uh, Adams. So if that's a case where you might uh, want to see me, let me know uh, particular dates. The easiest thing to do is email uh, info at austincustombrass.com or call, of course. If you have any questions, please put them on here on YouTube. They kind of disappear pretty quickly. I just want to make sure uh, yeah, cool. They disappear on my phone pretty quickly, so I want to make sure that I actually get them. Um, but I hope you're all doing fantastically well. I was trying to do this. I have some new streaming software, but for some reason it was uh, not cooperating, so I had to ixnay on that one. So, But either way, we've got plenty of goodies today. Uh, this is my A2. I put a video up of another A2. We just got a trade show demo A2 in and it's ridiculously nice. This is mine. It's a sterling silver bell version.
So, Adams makes a great all-around trumpet. Now this is the Adams A2, not to be confused with A2 Brute, but um, they make 10 different lines of custom trumpets, so it can be a little confusing. Um, there's a lot of stuff. If I took you for a little tour of the shop, which I can't do now because everything's bolted in, but um, maybe another one of these live videos, I'll do that. I do that, I've done that on, uh, on Facebook and I have done it on Instagram live videos as well. So let me know what's going on, where you're from, what's on your mind, if you have any questions about any gear, either uh, trumpet wise or mouthpiece wise that we sell. Um, you are looking at inside here is the Chagrill room. It's a little messy table, sorry. But um, where primarily the horns in this room with the exception of, I put two atoms in here just in case we wanted to talk about them today, um, including this one. Um, this is almost all Chagrills. So uh, we're one of uh, two or three dealers in the United States that sell the Chagrill line. So let's see, let's go back to, ooh, actually, I love this horn. Problem when you own a trumpet shop is that you always have tons of awesome gear. This is the JM2 from Chagrill as well. Uh, GM2 is a beautiful horn and I love it because it has that twin tube lead pipe which is really nice so if you have a question pop them on here I'm gonna be hanging out for a little bit here today's technically one of my days off but I'm always working but uh, but I love what I do so it's not really work you have a question you have a comment you have a yeah but that's great but I'm actually gonna wipe off the screen here so pardon this There we go, that's a little bit better. So, we have, uh, what else do we have? Oh, this is a store demo, Caracas Sea Trumpet. Hey Gary, how are you? Thank you for your order from a couple days ago. So, um, this is a Shoggle uh, Caracas Sea Trumpet. And you'll have to laugh because I don't really play Sea Trumpet that much. looking for a really cool sea trumpet this is uh this is actually really fairly priced i think we priced it under 1600 bucks so do i have an a5 there um i'm not doing an adams test and it's all the way in the back room i I could get it, but better yet, uh, send me an email and I'll do a demonstration. One of the things we want to do uh, in the next day or two is actually go through each one of the Adams trumpet line. Um, except for I might not have, I don't think I have an A6 or an, uh, no, I do have an A6, but I don't think I have an A3 or an A7 in stock, but, but we can do most of them. And there is a demo on, uh, here on YouTube of me playing it, but it might not have the new A2. So, um, if you send me an email, info at Austin Custom Brass, I can do that. So, thanks for your kind words, and uh, of course, thank you for your great support. We have a big announcement tomorrow, so you'll have to stay tuned. Probably, uh, I don't know what, what avenue we'll be sharing it, but it could be, uh, could be, um, uh, it's most likely on Facebook or 
or Instagram. So I just started doing live videos here on YouTube. So if you like them, stay and tell you tell your friends. No, I'm just kidding. This is more question and answer time. So if you have particular questions about instruments that we sell, uh, even instruments that we don't sell, even though I particularly like to talk about the stuff that we offer here at ACB. Put them here. Hopefully I can see them. Let me just make sure I haven't uh, missed any chat questions. So cool. Awesome. Hope you all are doing well. Let me just move this also a little closer. What is your favorite horn that you have played on the channel? You mean all time for all? Of, that's actually a really great question. Um, it's hard to say, uh, if you're talking about what I play, um, I don't know if I've actually done a, a video of my A5 that I have at home. And that's actually at the at my house, not here at the shop. That's m my favorite horn to play. But um, I love my Copernicus. I love this. Uh, hold on. I love that that guy. Whoa. I have to shrink my finger. I, I love I love the gonch horns in general. Um, the lotus trumpet that we had that we sold for one of our customers um, was also quite stunning. So that was a great trumpet as well. I don't really play much C trumpet, but here you go. about this trumpet it's not weird I guess but you don't need any alternate fingerings pretty cool for a C trumpet and I don't play C trumpet so I, I need to get my assistant John in to play this he'd do a, a far better job than I would Whoever plays that on C trumpet, right? No. It's actually a fun excerpt. That's Pulcinella, I think. It's got, of course, you've got the end of that. I saw a comment in here. Hold on. All right, so let's see what that comment was. Yeah, I can do that. I haven't played it in a while, so I, I apologize for my rhythm, rhythmic uh, inconsistencies. But I can play the Pine solo. So forth. I, I think that's pretty close. It's been a long time since I've played it. So, but um, this is. Uh, if you were wondering what this was, this is the Chagrel Caracas uh, C trumpet. So, um, that's a, let me look at your question, Bob. Your thoughts on why? Um, that's easy. There's a, there's a couple reasons why some of these other brands have um, improved their quality a great deal. Uh, let's just begin with the fact that Yamaha, Bach, and those larger companies started having Chinese companies make their instruments. Probably, I mean, with Yamaha, maybe 10. This is, we're talking student intermediate trumpets are made in China for, our, for Yamaha. Also for Bach now, Con Selmer. Um, they've been probably making them for close to a decade now. So when they first started, it might not have been the best quality, but, um, hold on a second. Let me get rid of that. Oh, I have to get rid of it with another thing. So I have my GoPro on and it's, it's yelling, it's yelling at me. So, um, so that's, there we go. There's your free, free GoPro chime. Um, 
So that's part of the reason, but also the fact that uh, people like myself have such input in terms of like what I want in a trumpet design with a company like Manchester Brass, which uh, is Taiwanese. <coughs> Um, and really, Manchester Brass is just a house brand name for us and Adams. But uh, what we can do with that is make an incredible trumpet. I mean, I think the RLGB, which uh, is in the other room, and you can check out the videos of that. It's a it's a really fine trumpet. Um, but uh, uh, well, you know, you'll probably want to get better impressions of of the offstage solo than mine because 99% of what I play is small group jazz. So, but I used to play excerpts, but it's been a long time. I practiced them last night, actually. Not that one, but, but, uh, what's this one? Hold on. That's as far as I go. But, uh, but, uh, you know, again, that's the Chagrel Caracas C trumpet, which we have, uh, we have a brand new one in, but this is a demo that we've had in the shop for a while that we've lowered the price a little bit. So, ah, here's a horn that I love. Let's switch gears big time. This is the Adams A9. This is a, this is a, a large board, and uh, I have a video on this coming tomorrow of this exact horn. I don't know why I'm, I'm going out of focus, but here we go. Um, I Stompy horns are great, so uh, I think there's a lot of great companies making great horns. Um, I just felt for myself, I love the VR2. I think that's a great trumpet, but it's a little too bright for what I do as a player. Doesn't mean it's a great, uh, it can't be a great trumpet for most people. And for a while, I played Stompy instruments before I had my shop, so um, well, I basically have played everything. Um, but. You know, I particularly choose um, the two companies that I play mostly, and really almost exclusively I play Adams, because they're very dear friends of mine. They make incredible instruments that, that are fairly priced. Like this horn, which is completely handmade, is like, I don't know why that's going out of focus so so much. Sorry, blurry, man. So, um, uh, it's about 3,000 bucks. So, you can't really beat it for the price when, you know, there's some trumpet companies out there nowadays charging like crazy amounts so but have a good night's sleep thanks for tuning in oh we could play goodbye which was one of i think that was one of That's a great song. You know that Gordon Jenkins, I think, wrote that song, but very, very cool vintage, vintage song. Uh, I think that was one of Benny. Benny Goodman was so popular, he had like two themes: so "Let's Dance" and "Goodbye." So, um, uh, <clears throat> the new price is around two thousand, uh, uh, Darnell. Uh, you can go to our website. The, the price on that one, right there, that one, is. Uh, I can't remember exactly, 15, 1600, I think it's under 1600. Um, and it is ridiculously fun. It's a great horn, especially if you're looking for a C trumpet that you don't have to like really adjust every note on. It's a large bore in uh, the sense that it's a .465, so it's a little bit larger than a Bach or Yamaha large bore, but it feels extremely well balanced. So if I had to play a C trumpet, I'd probably play that. You know, it really is fun, but I don't, I don't hack do anymore. So, I played more things like this, which is the Adams A9.
If you have questions, pop them my way. Just more of an informal Monday hang. Hope you're all doing well. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Hope you had a good New Year's Eve, good, good holidays. And what are your goals for 2019? 2019, can you believe it? So what mouthpiece am I using today? An Austin Custom Brass mouthpiece, of course. Uh, I've been playing an MV3CS for a while. Um, so it's my Mount Vernon 3 rim, which is bigger than a, a traditional like Bach 3 rim, we'll say. So it's more like a 2C rim. And the 3C, the CS cup is kind of, uh, a C cup and a CS cup are very similar. The CS has a slightly more aggressive entrance into the throat, so it makes it a little bit crisper and a little bit brighter without having to go to a shallower cup. So it's kind of like, I know like uh, Stork calls it uh, pa, um, pumped up. I think uh, Monet has a mouthpiece in his line that's a, like a slap cup or something. Uh, so it's, it's a concept that a few of us makers have uh, put in. So it just gives you a little bit more front. So if you have an overly dark trumpet, like this horn is a, is a pretty dark trumpet. So it's actually really nice to put the CS cup into it because it actually sort of helps give a little bit more front to the sound. It gives you a little bit more front. I mean, obviously you have to do the work, but um, I like it. Three, so that's an MV3CS. I don't know if that's coming over the, the picture, but so. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know, uh, Darnell. Uh, to me, the sound shape is 229-esque, but I, I, I never asked them what bell they have modeled that horn on. Um, Yes, again, it's blurry. Sorry, sorry about the blurriness. But um, so I can't, I can't comment on on that. I, I I'm sorry to say, but but it's, these are great questions, and I don't think that demo will last that long. That's for sure. We also have a demo Morrison. Uh, I can't remember which one. It just came. Uh, we had it on trial, but it came back. The guy ended up uh, deciding to go with another instrument from us. So um, he, I think he bought an Atoms of some sort, but I can't remember exactly which one. So we'll be uh, listing that in the next day or two as well. So be sure to check out our website. And we've shrunk our website, so it's a lot easier for people to find. It's just austincustombrass.biz, B-I-Z. You can also find us at austincustombrass.com and then hit the store button. So it'll take you to the exact same place. Again, thanks for you know taking a few moments out of your time. I know how precious your time is. Super appreciate you hanging out here now that the tech is working a little bit better. And hopefully uh, you can hear me just fine. And thank you again for your awesome support. So I'm gonna keep noodling, but if you have a specific song you wanna hear, excerpt's a little hard, but, uh, but I played a couple for uh, Darnell a few minutes ago. <laughs> so uh, it's been many years since I've done that, but uh, please, you know, share if you have a, a specific song request that you might have, pop them your way. I, I think I'm getting the comments here, but if I miss your comment, just pop it up again. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna play. Oh, what was I working on yesterday? Oh, I was working on a, Char a few Charliers. Hopefully, you guys practice Charliers, right? Um, you probably know this one. <laughs> But, you know, that's the one for the third valve, and you've got all that stuff near the end that's so nasty. And all that stuff. Ah, so, but we all have to practice, don't we? And uh, I was practicing some bebop heads, things like that, just to keep yourself fresh. And some people ask me, how do you do it? You don't sleep as much. That's an easy answer. So, no, I don't want to do that. You can ask Arturo. So... I play me. Or as Shuby Taylor, no, no way. Wait. Whatever. But uh no. High notes I used to play high notes and I'd get get into them, but when I was in high school I had a triple high C, but I'm trying to be more of a musician these days. 
It still keeps getting blurry. I don't know why. So, um, more questions, more comments, more song requests outside of play the Arturo's cadenza. So. There, I'll go the other way and play a. a you play that for me instead. I can play on Night Tunisia. How's that? Some people don't like my brutal honesty, but, um, so talk about noodling. So, uh, noodling is simple. That's a great question. I like that question very much. Um, it's something that I was a grown, I grew up as an ear player and I had a, a lot of trouble reading music for many years and eventually learned how to sight read a little bit better. Um, I was kind of forced at Disney to do that, but uh, um, anybody can improvise. That's always my premise is that you everybody can improvise. The biggest thing that you have to start doing is being willing to take take your foot and dangle it over the cliff, I always say. So say you take a tune like Amazing Grace, right? Now hopefully most people know, or actually let's do Happy Birthday. Um, so take a tune like Happy Birthday. I, don't, I still don't know why that's blurry, but... I added an upward note. I actually changed things. I'm going to pull this a little further. There we go. I think my lights were freaking out the camera there. So, um, but if you take something like, like a tune that you know really, really well, Louis Armstrong said never play the same way twice. Now, he didn't mean, you know, just destroy something. He meant you know, be creative with it, take it, and maybe one day to the next. If you have to write out like those little arpeggio things that I did, write them out. You can always write out an improvisation and then bass around it. In the later part of Louis Armstrong's life, he played the same solos, basically. Now, he didn't play them note for note every night, but people expected to hear West End Blues or his solo on Indiana or, you know, things things that he, were known for him to be played. He did those. So, I, I don't, I think you have to just dangle your foot off the cliff a little bit. Um, there were some, um, mm, uh, mini lessons here on YouTube that I've done about these little things. Um, but if you put stuff to paper and then start elaborating from the paper, that's awesome. You know, whatever way you get you feel comfortable playing. For me, I was just the opposite. I had the hardest time playing written music, playing orchestral music, playing excerpts, playing solos, like classical solos, because I always wanted to change things up. So, we all come from a different perspective. It's there's no right or or wrong way. I hope that helps you. So uh, let's see if difference in feel between A9 and A8. Um, totally different. Um, the A8 because of the threaded uh, receiver is a very secure and uh, 
I want to say predictable response. The A9 has a very loose slotting, very, very much similar to the vintage uh, Martin trumpets. So they're wildly different, although I think the sound shape of the two horns is they're pretty similar. Um, so it de depends on what you're looking for. Some people don't want to be forced into like, for instance, the A9, the note here, that's where it is. You're not really going to be able to bend it or move it around. The note on the A, uh, I hope I said A8. I, th I think I said A9, sorry. But that that's the A8. It's very rigid, very stable. The A9 is just the opposite. Um, I'm playing an A2 right now. I think it's very defined. I think it's as close as you can get to like the, the centering and solidity of the A8, but I didn't want the heavyweight uh, nature of the trumpet. So, so this is an A2, by the way, A2 Brute. <laughs> And it has every sound that I would want on in the trumpet. Uh, I play this, my A5, and I also have an upturned bell A6 trumpet, which is actually my profile pick on our Facebook page. Uh, again, if you haven't seen those pages, if you're just new to ACB, thanks for watching these videos. Um, be sure to check out all the stuff we have on, I think we have over 10,000 uh, subscribers on Instagram, and we have a, uh, over 10,000 on, on Facebook as well. So be sure to check those out, because I'm trying to do different things on each one of the pages, not exactly the same all the time. So I don't know if that helps for your question. Let's see, let's go back to some questions here. They, they disappear here on my phone. Um, but, uh, Oh, John, thank you, man. What are your most popular horns for lead playing? Well, one of them, I think maybe the easiest playing trumpet we have in the shop is actually a Shago, which this is the uh, Morrison Meister. It's a ridiculously easy trumpet. Uh, let me put, <coughs> sorry, in my lead mouthpiece. Now, I do switch mouthpieces for playing uh, commercial and lead music. Uh, A6 is also a great choice. A10 and the Adams. I am playing Copernicus still, except for I had to sell mine. Um, someone wanted my actual horn, so I actually sold it. So I'm waiting for another one to get built for me. Um, hopefully I'll have it in, in a month or two. Uh, in the interim, I'm bouncing on a, around on a few other Adams. So I, gotta, I guess I have to stock more, but you know, that's the hardest thing about having inventory like you'll see here. Hold on. All that inventory, it all costs money. And so it's a fine line to juggle how much inventory we keep in stock. But uh, back to John, I think it was your question. Hold on, let me make sure. Yeah, John, uh, back to your question. Um, uh, this is the Chagro Morrison Meister, made for James Morrison. And here's a, a little bit with a smaller mouthpiece. Now, I haven't played this mouthpiece in a while, so it might be a little brutal. <laughs> So it's really fun and easy to play. I mean, that's, I'm barely working when I'm playing that A, so. Just kidding on that low note. If I take my A2, if I take my A2 and do the same thing, it will still sound really great, but it'll be a little bit more open. It's a little bit, I'm trying to find the slot a little bit more. So, but there is a trade-off. I think the body and core of the A2 is better for me, for what I'm looking for. Uh, sorry, another comment I saw that just popped up. Um, no, I played a lot of heavy horns that are really bright and brittle. So, um, like for instance, Copernicus, is, which is probably the darkest horn that Adams makes, and that's the horn, the Double Shepherd's Crook model that they make for me. Uh, there's plenty of videos online of me playing that horn. Uh, it's also dark and bright. It's super light. Um, uh, so it's not, everything affects everything. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to add weight to a horn and make that horn play darker. The trumpet player makes the horn play dark anyways. So that's one of the big things. But you have things like flare of bell, dimension of bell, material of bell. For instance, this is a sterling silver bell, so it's very 
I, it's very complex in terms of the sound. It can be bright and dark. Um, but if you had a, a, a copper bell or a phosphor bronze bell or things like that, it would sort of, you know, sort of dictate the sound. Um, I don't know if that answered your question at all, but <coughs> like for instance, the A9 is a pretty light trumpet considering, um, and I think this is one of the darkest trumpets that we have. So, there's so many factors. Uh, I would never get bogged down with the minutia of things. You have to play a horn, you have to live with the horn, you have to make sure that the valves feel good, you have to feel good with the weight of the horn, you have to, it has to be responsive. Another thing I do not like about heavier trumpets is that most of them are very unresponsive. Um, think about it this way, it's driving an SUV or driving a sports car. I prefer the sports car. That's why Copernicus, although it looks quite heavy when you look at it, and it has the largest flared bell that Adams has ever made, um, and a trumpet. Uh, <clears throat> well, actually, I guess they just made a horn with Christian uh, that maybe is a, a, a bigger flare. But otherwise, for me, it was it's a huge bell, but it's very light, so it does all the coloring that I need, and then I can temper it with a mouthpiece. Uh, that's Also remember, mouthpieces have a humongous effect uh, on how the trumpets sound. Otherwise, they don't sound so great, you know. Although, there was a, that great video of Arturo playing a chorus off the corner of his mouth, but um, Amazing. So, uh, I don't know if that answered your question as well. So let's see if there's other questions uh, up. Please answer, uh, ask any questions that you might have. Be sure to check out our web store. We've been getting so many horns in recently. And by the way, our web store address is, let's see if I can actually, I don't know if I can actually type a comment. I don't think I can type a comment. I don't even know what these buttons do. I've never done a, a YouTube video with my uh, phone. Sorry. So, uh, but either way, um, just go to austincustombrass.biz. There's a, and if you scroll down the page, there's a little uh, thing that says new, new releases, or uh, there's a bunch of uh, new, new, new arrivals. That's updated almost every day with all of the new horns we get, because we move a lot of horns in and out of the shop. Uh, if you're looking for something in particular, you have to probably email us and we'll put you on what we call a wish list and the wish list will uh, get you on that say you um, we had someone just email us um, they wanted what did they want oh I can't remember uh, Shilky E flat trumpet and so we were like okay no problem we'll put you on the list usually when we get E flat trumpets they don't even get up to the web store we have people in line already and they go right out to them so if there's something in particular that you're interested in checking out and purchasing be sure to email us info at Austin Custom Brass or just reach out to us via uh, the web store or YouTube or things like that so but if you're still in high school don't worry about your trumpet practice sorry to tell you that if you're still in high school practice six to eight hours a day when i was at your age in high school thank goodness i didn't have distractions of cell phones and of the like uh to bog me down and and make me uh take away from my practice time. So uh, I asked Wynton Marcellus how he got so good. He said I did, he didn't miss a day of practice from age 12 to age 17 uh, and of at least four hours a day. So, uh, you know, there is no magic pill. I wish I would sell it if there was, trust me. I feel like my mouthpieces are as close to that as possible, but I still have to practice every day and I hope you do too and realize that practicing is the answer. Long tones, slurs, fundamentals, finger flexibilities, articulation, range work, all that stuff you have to do. Um, and then you can pretty much play any instrument and it will work. So, Armando, how you doing brother? Hopefully we'll get to see you at TMEA, right? I hope so. <laughs> So hopefully we'll get to see you in in Texas, brother. So, and thank you for your kind words. You play an MV3CS, I think, right? I know you're around the MV3C range, but I've been playing my MV3CS for the past maybe two months. It's such an easy mouthpiece to play, so. 
you might have been one of the guys that um, inspired me on that. I can't remember, but thank you if you did. <laughs> So that's like a, and it's like a 2C mouthpiece and I'm barely working on that. So it's super fun. And it, it just has a little bit more spark than the MV3C, uh, MV3L. I can't play the MV3L. It's a little too shallow for me, but TA2 is close. But um, lately I've just been playing this guy, which is, and not even my lead mouthpiece. So, but then again, I don't have to, I only had to play lead like once last month. So. But MB uh, 3 cb is a beautiful sounding mouthpiece as well. So thank you so much, man. You rock. Um, anywho, I'm glad that people are finally tuning in and s saying hi and thanks for everybody who's stayed. Uh, if you have some questions about what what I do at the shop, if you haven't checked out our shop, be sure to do. We have a new website uh, for... It's the same website, but we just redirected the address. Uh, it used to be austincustombrass.mybigcommerce.com, and that's a lot to type in. We, uh, simple, austincustombrass.biz, B-I-Z. You could also go to austincustombrass.com and then hit the store button. They both go to the same place. So hopefully you have spent a few minutes there, check out our stuff. I have a whole bunch of mouthpiece videos that I'm currently editing that I've been working on that hopefully will enlighten a lot of people about our whole mouthpiece line. So um, stay tuned for those. I have to get back to work. My boss is telling me to get back to work, but I really enjoyed my time here with you all today. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for all your amazing support of ACB. Keep it going um, and stay tuned for a cool announcement in the next day or two. Take care. Ciao.